I am Mr. Literal, unless it's a figure of speech. That's true. Did you hear that about me? Yeah, that's correct. I take things literally because God means what he says, allowing for figures of speech. And I know what they are. I have studied them. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the end of the week. This is Martin Zender, the world's most outspoken Bible scholar making sense for a living. Five days, five days a week here from my laundry room studio. Everything is in order here. My two lamps, Judy, the phone cord, and we're ready to go on the 7th bowl because on Monday we're going to talk about the secret of Babylon, a change of topics. Yes, and then very soon we will be talking about the golden cup that Babel pours on the whole earth as we enter chapter 17. All this to look forward to probably next week. Let's read about the seventh bowl and then i want to particularly talk about this hail because we talked about the earthquake before i did didn't i i told you that the greatest earthquakes earth has ever known the ones since humanity have come to be on earth whether it's in tokyo or san francisco or different uh alaska huge earthquake there in alaska a while back i mean we're talking maybe sevens eights on the richter scale the earthquake coming is going to level every city on the earth. Every building will be dismantled brick by brick, just as the temple was after Jesus' departure from this earth. We talked about that. Epic proportions. We haven't talked about the hail. Here we go. And we are in, again, chapter 16, the seventh messenger. The seventh messenger pours out his bowl on the air. And a loud voice came out of the temple of God saying, It has occurred. This is it. This is the climax, folks. And lightnings and voices and thunders occurred and a great earthquake occurred such as did not occur since humanity came to be on the earth. A quake prodigious. It is so great. And the great city came to be divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fall. And Babylon the great is brought to remembrance before God to give her the cup of of the wine of his furious indignation and every island fled and the mountains were not found and hail large as a talent weight is descending out of heaven on humans and humans blaspheme God as a result of the calamity of hail seeing that great is its calamity tremendous When God follows up the word great with the word great and then adds the word tremendous and italicizes it with an exclamation point, we're talking about something else. I'm going now to a website by the name of prophecyproof.org. Prophecyproof.org. I would not ordinarily go to a mainstream type of prophecy website except that this article on the hail is fascinating and disturbing quoting now who's the writer here wayne crawley this is from march 9th 2012 the purpose of this article is to explore how large the hailstones falling to the earth may be in terms of size Matthew Niesler published an article describing his attempt to estimate the size of the great hailstones that will fall and the velocity that the great hailstones will fall when they arrive at sea level following the pouring of the seventh vile judgment. Vile, V-I-A-L. See, they're using, I think, the King James Version here. It's a bowl. A vial? Are you kidding me? A vial is like a test tube that drips and drops and you just pour it delicately into another test tube. That's not what we're talking about here. It's a bowl. Anyway. Niesler used a hailstone that measured 5.581 inches in diameter and weighed 1.68 pounds, a hailstone that used to be the largest measured in the U.S., to calculate the numbers necessary to estimate the size of the great hailstones in Revelation 16.21. So we have to have some kind of standard here. So for a standard, this seems intelligent to me, take the largest hailstone ever discovered, ever found in the United States and compare it. Niesler also assumed that the great hailstones would weigh 75 pounds in his analysis. Now, apparently, there's some uh, controversy 
here. It's a talent weight, according to the scripture here. And hail large as a talent weight, large as a talent weight. So it's near a talent weight, a talent. It's a, it's not something you, it's not juggling kangaroos. A talent here is a weight of measure from ancient days. And apparently there's some controversy here. Anywhere between 75 and 100 pounds. So Niesler also assumed that the great hailstone would weigh 75 pounds in his analysis. This is Niesler now, this guy named Niesler. Niesler found the following. This is what he found. The great hailstones would be approximately, that is the great hailstones of revelation that God calls great and tremendous, would be approximately 19.9 inches in diameter and would fall at a speed of 370 miles per hour when they arrive at sea level. I'm a literalist. There's no reason not to take these hailstones literally. Hailstones don't represent anything. They're hailstones. A talent weight does not represent anything except a talent weight. I noticed, this is back to the article, that several Bible commentators state that a talent's weight is closer to 100 pounds than 75 pounds. Given this, I thought it might be useful to recalculate the size of the hailstones using 100 pounds as the weight to get another sense of how large the great hailstones may be. I like this because in his book, The Unveiling of Jesus Christ, Nock, A.E. Nock, estimates the hailstones to be 99 pounds. So I think 100 pounds is closer to the talent weight here. Given this, I thought it might be useful to recalculate. So that's what he does. The author of this article takes Niesler's information and recalculate, recalculates it from 75 pounds to 100 pounds. Now, back to the writer of the article. I estimated the size of a 100-pound hailstone by following the same steps Niesler used to calculate the size of a 75-pound hailstone. Makes, he makes this note here. Niesler has worked for more than 10 years as an aeronautical engineer, so I trust that he knows the proper steps to take to perform the calculations correctly. In addition to using a different weight, I utilized a different hailstone than the one utilized by Niesler to perform the calculations. And then the author makes note of this. The largest hailstone discovered in the U.S. fell in Vivian, South Dakota. Maybe it's Vivian. I apologize to anyone who lives here. In July 2010, as recently as that. The roughly volleyball-sized hailstone weighed 1.9375 pounds, measured 18.62 inches in circumference, and measured 8 inches in diameter. Below is a photo of the hailstone. And I'm going to switch the laundry cam around here. I can't, I won't be able to see it as I do it. I'll just have to trust that I'm actually showing it to you. I'm going to aim it blindly and hope to catch the hailstone. This is it. Can you see it? This is the largest hailstone discovered in the U.S. This baby fell in Vivian, South Dakota in July 2010. It's roughly volleyball sized. I'm scanning up and down hoping to capture it. Weighing 1.9375 pounds, measuring 18.62 inches. If I didn't get this correct, then uh, Kelly will put the photo of this hailstone in this show above the audio file. All right. All right. On we go. I calculated the size of a 100 pound hailstone to be approximately 29.8 inches in diameter. I believe that Niesler's figure was 19.9 for a 75 pound hailstone. The sea level velocity, listen to this. Are you sitting down? The sea level velocity I calculated was 284 miles per hour. The hailstone's diameter would be larger than the diameter of an average mountain bike wheel. That's what this particular writer used for an analogy. The following photo shows a 29-inch and a 26-inch mountain bike wheel. Let me show you the photos of the mountain bike wheels, if I can here, to show you the approximate size of the hailstones that will fall at the pouring out of the seventh bowl by the seventh messenger. Ouch. Ouch. 
to continue. Imagine I can. I'm trying. It's hard, but I will do it for the sake of trying. Uh, imagine how much damage a 29.8 inch diameter hailstone weighing 100 pounds would cause when falling on people and objects at 284 miles per hour. The author of this article at prophecyproof.org ends the article in this fashion. I think the treading of the wine press analogy mentioned in Revelation 14.20 and elsewhere is befitting. I imagine the hailstones landing on people would have the same type of impact that a person's feet has when he or she lands on grapes. The hailstones would absolutely crush anyone or anything that got in their way. And then absurdly, the author ends this way. I hope you found this article interesting. Again, you can find Niesler's original article at the following link, and he gives it. That was Wayne Crawley. Uh, deadly. This largest hailstone mentioned in the U.S. Imagine one of these, first of all. Imagine one of these bicycle tire, 100 pound hailstones falling at 284 miles an hour. Imagine thousands of them. Imagine them coming at the same volume that normal hail comes today. It's a sheet of hailstones. Shh. There have been hailstones, golf ball size, that have penetrated the hoods of cars and that have certainly broken the windshields of cars. Hailstone the size of golf balls is lethal, certainly lethal to automobiles. Most people run for the hills, but you're not going to run for the hills because these hailstones will crush the hills. You're not going to escape into your house because these things will not only come through their roof, they'll be instantaneously in your basement. The velocity is going to be such that the roof is going to be like a piece of crepe paper. It's going to zoom. It's going to be instantly through your roof and in your basement, through your skull. And if you happen to be sitting on the sofa, through that. And that's one. God is serious about cleansing the earth. He is serious about knocking the wind out of humanity's great pride and the pride of Babylon. Oh, great Babylon, the apple of humanity's eye, the concentration of wealth and power and wonder where all the evil spirits live. The evil spirits are practicing now for Babylon and they're living in churches. They're living in the religions of the world. The four major religions, Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, that's where the demons are practicing. And everything's going to come together, religion and politics, into a wild beast. And it is sickening and it is disgusting, yet it presents itself to the world as a great light. We are not deceived by this light. We understand the secret of lawlessness that light is currently the disguise, the refuge, the diversion of these malignant evil spirits. But the day is coming when they will be exposed for what they are. They will be exposed. The darkness will come on them. The boils will come on them. And the hail will wipe them out from the face of the earth. In the meantime, we're apprised of this. We're aware of the stratagems of the adversary. And we will not be tricked by what appears to everyone else in the world to be wonderful and marvelous. It's not. It's evil. The only refuge from this type of bombardment, spiritual and hail, is the grace of God as found in the letters of the Apostle of Grace, Paul.